Well, the question is, how, how much of the caring then is moved to political action? How many people are going to sit in a small room on a wooden chair listening to somebody with slides trying to help them make their own contribution? It, that's the that's issue. not where it has to begin. It begins with making yourself aware and changing your habits at home, you know, As and... consumers, we have so much responsibility, and, and that's, I think, what we all need to assume more so, especially once the information has been given. You know, clearly. I, I read John, excuse me, John Robbins' book, you know, and it shed so much light on all this. And I, I had no idea, no matter how much someone tells you you hear, until you read it for yourself and have the statistics and the scientists to back it. Yeah. You know? uh, just some of the, we'll talk to John in just a moment. Uh, okay. I was going to say, look, how people are, uh, are going to be moved to political action. They'll be moved to political action where they're outraged at what's going on. And what is going to outrage them is education, information communication yeah. and then enrollment and then they'll move to polit political action anybody that says that ending hunger in the planet is impossible hasn't looked at what's happened in the past year when all the communist dictatorships of e uh, eastern europe nobody any nobody could predict that everybody said it's impossible that communism yeah. will end in the planet you know okay, yeah. so so don't don't get you know, don't give me any more excuses that it can't be done. Anything can be done when a critical mass of people get behind it. And yeah. hunger is no exception. And, and your cynicism is right, I think, because, you know, it, it is, it is thought-provoking, and, and we need to be the devil's advocate, you know, on all these matters. Soil erosion alone. Apparently, we are quite literally losing The downfall of the soil. greatest civilizations. Lots uh, of topsoil. Uh... And uh, global warming now, uh, that's apparently, th that has happened, and uh, certainly enough members of the scientific community have stood up to say so. And it, uh, so uh, here we are. It's the only neighborhood we got. It is called the planet Earth. Uh, River, what do you remember about the book, just before we meet John? I mean, what are some of the things? Uh, first of all, uh, let's talk about meat for a, s a second. You've got to kill an awful lot of animals in order to s ship a small quantity of meat to a marketplace. That's you one problem. Kill, uh, a, a mountain gives birth to a mouse here. We, we have species that we haven't even discovered yet in the rainforest that have been uh, mutilated and, and are forever lost, and, and plant lives and, and medicines and all sorts of amazing uh, um, properties that take millions of years to develop. And then in, in a single day, we just cut it down, you know, uh, two football fields every two seconds or something. And, and it's and it's so that we can have cheaper hamburgers. And yeah, I think it's that about the convenience. Are... You know, right now it's convenient for us to chop down the rainforest for hamburgers. Uh -huh. But when we have no more rainforest left and we are having a hard time breathing, right. it's going to be too late. What do you feed, Zoe? She's still nursing, and I. Well, but no. More plus. plus. Let me finish. Okay. She's still nursing, and then I give her uh, protein-enriched pasta, and soy yogurt. She likes, she's very picky, she likes guacamole, she likes broccoli, um, she likes split pea soup, uh, she likes rice, and... We're all getting yeah. over here. <laughs> the woman in the front row going... Mm. <laughs> um, no, listen, uh, I don't know anybody who's going to... Uh, you obviously love your baby, and you're an enlightened mother, and everybody should have that. And well, that's your why baby I'm here. Does. Huh? I said, that's why I'm here, you know, to share what information I've learned. Yeah, now tell me, Elisa, just... Uh, we got to, uh, if they want to ask you about it, and they will, it's, it's legal, but uh, we don't want to have too many subjects in the air get confused. You're not scared you didn't vaccinate your baby. I'm scared. I'm scared, and I'm scared to vaccinate her, which is why I didn't vaccinate her in the first place, and which led me to, to read about the warnings that are out there. And what I've learned are there warnings about introducing these alien microorganisms into our children's blood and the long-term effects, which could be trivial, or they could be quite hazardous, and they could be just allergies or asthma or sleep disorders, or they could be cancer, leukemia, multiple sclerosis, mm -hmm. sudden infant death syndrome. It's very scary and it's very serious, and I and I think because I, I felt <coughs> wrong doing it, is that's why I didn't do it. And uh, you know, I mean, we have to think twice. Why are our children getting these diseases? What? And what is the uh, biochemical legacy of the vaccination? How long does it last and what might it be its effect? Yes. Yeah, You're putting something into your baby's bloodstream. Everybody ought to think about that twice. Uh, we yes. did this official stamp and uh, 
someone's designated uh, to, to give us this information, which isn't really, really known about or researched, you know, and we find out the hard way, you know. No one knew that, you know, the pill in its original state, you know, for women, birth control, I don't want to get into this, this is a big one, but was, was so detrimental to, to health and, and, and the hormonal imbalance and all of the above. Let's bring out John Robbins. He's a... He knows okay. all this stuff. All right. But you should be able to believe these people that are telling us what is good for us. Why? We because be. they're our exactly. brother man. Yet, that's not the case. Yeah. Well, look, right. what I see is that a new era is coming. I think I, you might call it the 90s era, but it's a new era for the planet. Which thinking is shifting from profit and seeing success as how much money you have in the bank and see, uh, uh, into seeing success as how much, how, what a difference you make with other people and with yourself. I think that's a shift that is happening. Let me just, uh, this audience wants in, we'll give you a chance, and we will meet John Robbins in a moment. Are you there? Call her high. Yes, hi. My question is for Lisa, yep. and you mentioned your baby and that you feed her, all of those things. My son is 10 months old. That does not satisfy his appetite. You know, I give him broccoli, organic baby food even, and I find that I have to give him chicken. We don't eat meat, but he needs more, and what could I feed him? Are you still nursing? No. Well... That wasn't enough for him. I've tried to breastfeed him, and he just, you know, he needed more. Can he talk? Did he tell you? <laughs> How old is your baby? Ten months. More than Ten the milk I could give him, though. I knew he was hungry. Yeah. Well, I know, I know Zoe's very picky. She still nurses, and she's satisfied with that. And also, like I said, I supplement her diet with other things, what, you know, that I told you. And I guess you just uh, have to really experiment. Uh, so uh, Zoe will not have fish or chicken, then, is that right? No, they're poisonous now. You know, they're not, it's not, even if you get or organic chickens, you know, our, 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 our oceans are polluted. And well, the fish that they feed the, the chicken has estrogen in it. We do have an awful lot of additives, no doubt about it. And we've had a f number of other people say that on our program. We're flushing our toilets into the sea. And so everything that goes out, including Drano, you know, the yeah, all that yeah. Is, is in the fish. And we're continuing to use styrofoam. And how many... But there's hope. There is hope. Yes. We believe you, River. We believe you. One thing that is important, I believe, is not to make these guys that are polluting the oceans or the guys that are the cat, even the cattlemen, not to make them villains. They're not. But include them in the purpose. Include them that they can actually contribute yeah. positively. Very good point. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Sure. Not to uh, separate sides and say, these are the bad guys, we're right, the good guys. It's no longer a matter of you or I. It's a matter of you and me. And that's very important, and that's what's going to make it work. When we get these guys to see that they can actually make a difference and contribute within their own power, their own businesses, yeah. and in, perhaps instead of growing uh, cattle, they can grow oranges, or they can <laughs> grow melons, or they can grow something. You know what I'm saying? It's not a matter of villains and good guys. It's a matter of you and me. Now this is the 90s. That's what this is about. Okay. Uh, very good. You remind me, and I know you'll be flattered, of Archbishop Romero. Oh! <laughs> uh, the man that you played uh, in a film, uh, one of the heroes of our century, the man who was assassinated as he said mass on the altar in El Salvador. Are you there, caller? Hi. Hi. Um, I do believe that the three people on your stage right now have a good cause. And aside from Raul, I think that both Lisa and River don't give an appearance, so people might not take them as seriously as they might if they gave a more presentable appearance. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> we got to get a shirt and tie for River and maybe some... Uh... But you know what, though? You know, you're going to let nutrition and health and love, like, I, you know, I you're going to hold yourself back from life well, because the of the way we're... Through. Yeah. Our appearance. It's not about dress code, you know. Yeah, these are our. Take your block to your grandmother. 